This Birding Adventures episode is powered by Nikon, your world leader in optics since 1917, and sponsored in part by Paradise in Portugal, your South Portugal birding retreat, and by Portugal Tourism. Welcome to this week's birding adventure. We've just flown into Lisbon. It's a short six hour flight from New York City, from the US, very easy to get to. And we're heading across the Sado Estuary in South Portugal to meet with our local guide, Frank McClintock from Paradise in Portugal. On this week's episode, we're in search of the great bustard, our golden bird for this week. Let's go birding. Now is the time of your life. This is the perfect habitat for this bird. Beautiful plumes. Look at the plumes on the neck and the head. Yeah, that's what I call birding. Awesome, that's our golden bird. Frank, I presume. <laughs> Hi. Hi, great to meet you. Welcome to paradise. <laughs> Thank you, it is paradise. Look at this place, absolutely beautiful. Frank's place, just north of the Algarve, nestles in the wild hills of the lower Alentejo, overlooking a vast freshwater lake. This birder-friendly location is the perfect base from which to explore the wonderful birds and culture of South Portugal. This is rural tourism at its absolute best. Vamos procurar as abertadas and let's go birding! This morning, Frank's taken us out to a site about 100 kilometers north of Paradise in Portugal, a place called Lagoa Santa André. The excellent thing about this location are the different grades of habitat, from water for shorebirds to the reeds for the warblers, and then to this dry marsh habitat over here, where we're seeing yellow wagtails, crested lark, and stone chats. And then we've got this tamarisk woodland, or this tamarisk brush behind me, which is really good for corn buntings to sit on and sing their songs in the mornings and in the late afternoons. This behind me is the habitat of the Savvy's Warbler, a warbler which is very localized across Portugal and Europe and is only found in these small isolated patches. Now the Savvy's Warbler forms part of a group of birds that are notoriously called the LBJs or the Little Brown Jobs. Technically very, very difficult to ID and one of the best ways to get onto one of these birds is by their call. And the Savvy's Warbler has got this very, very unique call. It sounds almost like a cricket or a mole cricket in particular. A very sort of tick, 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 a very sort of vibrating call and we're going to listen and see if we can find any over here. There's one calling right there. You hear that? kind of a crickety call. I'm going to go down in front of these reeds here and see if we can push them out. Here comes one in front of me over here. Just in front. Yes, it is a savvies. You can hear it calling. It's calling in front of me. Probably only 10 feet away from me here in this dry reed. We've got European reed warblers coming in here as well. We've got a great reed warbler here as well. The big brownish bird. Look at them all coming in, trying to investigate. They look like little trapeze artists, hanging, twisting on the reeds. So here we've got the Savvy's warbler and also a European reed warbler right here in these reed beds. They're quite similar looking. They're both very pale. The Savvy's has got more richer buff sort of flanks on it and obviously that call is totally diagnostic but right here 
both species of reed warblers. We've also had zitting cysticulars land in, and it's amazing what pishing can do for warblers. Obviously, the one thing with pishing at this time of the year in May, you don't want to overdo it because this is when the birds are breeding, and you just want to lure them out, get a quick look at them, and then move off. Excellent, Savvy's Reed Warbler.